Hey, what's up guys? Meal Skull here. Welcome back to Starbound episode 16. When we left off, we defeated Astronox and the High Lotto Quest. Finally. Um, yeah. It was a lot of fun. I always have fun. Uh, we have some reading to do. <laughs> what do you guys think? Oh man. Oh geez. Oh. Okay, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. Are you ready? A treatise, a treatise, tre treatise on the Florin. A high level history book recounting the race's turbulent relationship with the Florin. <clears throat> Generations ago, high level civilization was almost undone. A race of philosophers and artists almost brought to extinction by the barbarians. Barbarous, barbarous attacks of a savage horde. The Florin, simplistic, violent, and uncivilized, ravaged our lands and savaged our people. Their ferocious violence threatened our very existence. In modern times, this old enmity has faded into non existence. While the Florin have simply forgotten about this episode in our shared past, we, Hylotl, have emerged to forgive. Er, we Hylotl have managed to forgive. We do, we do so magnanimously and with the lightness and with lightness in our hearts we forgive them. Even though they destroyed centuries worth of literature, artistry, and achievement, even though they drove us terrified beneath the ocean waves, even though they tried to eat us, yes, we definitely forgive them. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> Uh, in defense of our race, a Hylotl scholar's musings on counterculture within Hylotl society. The Hylotl race has sometimes been accused of homogeny, as if in lacking a significant counterculture we are somehow deficient. To these accusers, I say, observe the de devout avian and his grounded brother, regard the rebel apex as he encounters a mini-nog official. Our culture is vivid, our thinking enlightened. We lack nothing but hostility. In truth, this congenial tranquility is our greatest strength. The reason we're reading these is because I need to sell them. <laughs> the evolution of the Hylotl. As Hylotl were originally a land-dwelling species, our biology has undergone rapid evolutionary changes in the several thousand years since adop adopting a subaquatic lifestyle. This is possible due to our naturally fast genetic metabolism, short lifespan, and frequent generational turnover compared to other life forms. After initially relying on hylodal technology to aid in swimming and breathing, our bodies began to develop fin-like protrusions and retractable webbing between fingers and toes. It is still necessary for Hylodal to breathe air, but our increased lung capacities allow for prolonged sessions of deep sea activity and when appropriate can be utilized as a buoyancy aid. Modern Hylodal also have the ability to see clearly in both air and water unaided despite the differences in density. And so yeah, uh, what do we got? Never invite an, a Nova Kid to tea. A letter from a uh, tattered Damalian to their close friend Itsuki. Dear Itsuki, I write this letter to you from the re uh, remains of my camp. It appears that missionary work is far more or er, is more difficult than I anticipated. Despite the training we received, I was woefully unprepared for these for creatures such as these. The, this or er, the morning began as peacefully as one could expect on an uncivilized planet like this. Nonetheless, it was chosen so that I may spread Hylotl peace to the less fortunate, so I was determined to rough it. I placed my tea atop a gentle flame and eased myself into my morning meditation as usual. However, I could hardly achieve a state of enlightenment for the cacophony I murdered that word, I'm sure, that uh, soon assaulted my ears from beyond a hill. After a calming breath, I set out to investigate. 
A brief hike to the top of the hill revealed two alien life forms shining like beacons, each with a marking atop their face. A search through my xenobiological handbook revealed, revealed these to be Novakid, a, primi a primitive gaseous species. The two, glowing blue and yellow respectively, whooped and hollered as one strummed a guitar, creating some semblance of music. What better specimens to enlighten than these creatures, thought I. I strode down the hill. They seemed wary of me, but I assured them that I meant no harm. I introduced myself in customary fashion, and they returned with their names. The blue one, Bonnabelle. The yellow, Nim. They possessed a most ridiculous accent. <laughs> Nim extended his hand, and I assume, and I, assuming it was a customary greeting, reached out in response. The savage shook my hand with a vigor that nearly toppled me, the whole exchange quite uncouthed. Determined to civilize these ruffians, I invited them to tea, as tradition dictates. They seemed very excited at the prospect, eagerly following me back to camp. My tea boiled, and as I prepared the proper settings, the Novakid uh, perused my camp. There was not a single uh, ornament they were not curious about. Their filthy hands touched all my perfectly aligned furnishi furnishings. They shattered my favorite coral sculpture. Nevertheless, I knew I could enlighten them. Over tea, I spoke about, me er, about opening their third eye to the world. They seemed to barely pay attention. The tea I served was my finest blend, but after a single sip, they dropped my cups, shattering them on the floor. I struggled to remain calm as Bonnabelle removed a jug of some liquid and passed it between herself and Nim. Perhaps I could earn their trust by partaking in this cultural tradition, I thought. After a hesitation, they allowed me the jug. Maybe they're all, maybe they're warming up to my teaching, teachings after all. Those thoughts fade away after I lifted the jug to my mouth. The drink burned down my throat, and after one sip I fell unconscious. When I awoke, Bonnabelle and Nim were gone, leaving me in my battered camp nursing a terrible headache. I end this note with a warning for you, missionary, uh, for your missionary travels, Itsuki. Never invite a Nova kid to tea. They got him wasted. All right. Food. What do I got? Rotten food. Can't eat it. <laughs> Boy, we're rotting all of our food, aren't we? Should stay fresh. Fresh. Let's eat this stuff. Um. Hmm. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we need to make some food. That's all right. We're okay. Got some reading to do, my friends. I know it's not the most exciting thing, but I love the lore in this game. So yeah, we're gonna kind of go through it. Um, let's save Noxes for last. Iron Beak's Journal, an excerpt, an excerpt entitled "Day 23 of My Escape" by Iron Beak. I only wanted to use the microwave. For the past three days, I'd been heating my food over the barrel fires smoldering in the cargo hold. Though truthfully, I have yet to encounter a part of this uh, leviathan ship that I would not qualify as part of the cargo hold. But this uh, made everything taste of gasoline. Or maybe the gasoline taste was psychological. The only way to know was to find the microwave to which the captain had given me very particular directions. Through the galley's ventilation shaft, past the third broken television, left at the skeleton. But all I saw when I arrived at that derelict crawl space was an arcade cabinet that appeared to have been dragged through a grease fire. Upon inspection, however, I noticed the word popcorn crudely etched over a button previously labeled insert coin. You get what you pay for, I guess. It's not a raw deal. Considering I had nothing with which to pay uh, passage out of this star system except a promise to earn my keep, Better than the alternative, imprisonment, execution, or worse, on Avos. It's just that I hadn't expected to need a handgun to protect myself from crocodiles on my way to the lavatory. I'd expected to be working among a crew of fellow travelers, given this ship is large enough to house a hydroelectric dam. But I soon, 
discovered, its only occupants were the captain and myself, and our journey through the horse butt nebula would take weeks as we <laughs> made hundreds of inexplicable pit stops to excavate asteroids and expand the complex garbage ecosystem of the ship's interior. Maybe there had been a crew once, I thought, before the crocodiles. I opened the cabinet's coin door and placed my bowl of un under or uncooked pearl peas inside. When I pressed the button that once read insert coin, a fan whirred and a maze appeared on the ancient uh, cathode ray screen. I waited, but nothing seemed to happen. Experimenting with what uh, remained of the joystick revealed it worked to navigate my invisible avatar through the labyrinth. At first I was entertained by what seemed like a pleasant distraction when the game took a sinister turn and uh, when I noticed a menacing shadow following me through its hallways. The maze provided no weapons and when I attempted to flee the shadow appeared on the opposite wall growing ever larger. Only when I felt the sound in uh, my belly a low stuttering creak like a buckling girder did I realize the shadow was not digital. The crocodile's growl preceded its charge from the ventilation shaft and gave me just enough time to unload my pistol down its throat. Perhaps turning myself into the stargazer militia would have been easier, I reflected. Not as rewarding, though. The arcade machine chimed. When I pried open the coin door, waves of popcorn erupted from it and cascaded across the sticky floor. All things considered, it didn't taste half bad. Boy, that's a story. Ooh. Put that there. Uh, freedom, an excerpt of Beef Jeff's Book of Poetry by Peels. Ship is prepped. I hear it humming. Pulse is pounding. Heart is thrumming. Many now guards are close behind. Fear and panic floods my mind. Light glows green. I waste no time. Punch the throttle. Do the crime. Neon signs are rushing past. Obey big ape or be outcast. I know I never can return, but as the warp drive starts to burn, I vow to set my people free from their life of slavery. I cannot leave them behind bars for while I am free bound for the stars. That's nice. Official notice. While we welcome scholars to the newly re rediscovered Grand Pagoda Library, we ask that all visitors take care within the building. We entreat you not to handle the more fragile books and beseech you not to enter areas that are clearly unsafe. We would like to remind our learned kin that common sense is just as important as wisdom. We got two more, and nope, and then Knox's journal. All right, mini nog issue joke book. I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> Why did the high lotto cross the stream to get to the other tide? Why do avians manage the worst sports bars? Because they never have any wings. <clears throat> I'm trying not to laugh. What do you call a comrade who is behaving in an unorthodox manner? It doesn't matter. Tell Mini Nog. A rebel, a traitor, and a worthless excuse for a comrade walk into a bar. The, the question got me. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. The man is quickly detained. Thank you for your patriotism, comrade. Uh, what gets bigger the more you take from it? A grave. Remember, comrade, unorthodox behavior often ends in terrible accidents. What do you get when you mix free thinking and rebellion, the privilege of a brief vacation? Uh, what do you call a room with 50 comrades in it? A wonderfully designed and comfortable Mininog issued detainment room. That took a dark turn. I've read that one before, but... Yeah. Salvage plans. Uh... Hold on, what is what is the subject? Documentation of plans to restore the Grand Pagoda Library. And I can't read it from here again, so... Okay, what is it? Salvage plans. There it is. Regarding the Grand Pagoda Library, structural integrity is broadly good. 
though some fail-safes have been triggered by damage. The majority of the library and its contents are intact. Our estimates suggest 60% of the library is in good condition while 25% is poor, and, the only, and only 15% severely poor with the modern techniques available to us. Repair and reconstruction should take little time. Then we will be able to bring in the binders and restorers and soon enough hire a new librarian. Okay. Me and I'll get issued a book. Again? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm putting these in the wrong spot. Salvage plans, letter from the librarian. I think that's the one I just read, right? No. Announcement made by the original librarian of the Grand Pagoda Library. Um. Letter from the librarian. We've had word they are going to sink the library, and so this temple of knowledge slips. Oh, okay, I did read this, I think. I'll leave it here in case you guys want to read it. Okay. And Knox's journal. Then we can do something this episode. The universe is ours by rights. It belongs to the humans. The, the Acasis members might not understand much, but at least they grasp that. They exult in their su uh, supremist rhetoric and scamper around spreading their hate, but they just can't fathom the genesis of what's happening here. Still better an army of morons than no army at all. Esther would understand if she could only see past her flawed imaginings. People have a way of letting their own agendas bind them. She's an adult fool, obsessed with unity and harmony, and completely unable to see what's right in front of her. She'll learn. My old teacher will learn. She's a nice tip bug in the path of an avalanche. Okay, so we've read them all. Let's sell them all. Let's go. Let's go. Go, 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 Muley. We're going to the two-stop teleshop. So yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Because um, then we can get rid of them with no regrets. Because the codex has been filled with our knowledge. So yeah, and a little bit of lore. The lore in this game is really good, guys. So, you, 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 all the things. Beautiful. Sell for 55 bucks. Ooh, baby. Um, yeah. I think everything else is pretty good. Okay, we're good, we're good. Um, how are we doing on... I want to check my matter manipulator. Tech cards, upgrade modules. Oh, we have a ton of those. How many pixels? 6,000. 6815. What do we need, 10? 10K? Yep, 10K. Okay, well, we're almost there. Uh, what we should do is get some food and do some exploring. Um, I need some Durasteel so I can make a radiation EPP. Not the Terramart. Gotta go over here and get some chocolate. Alright. Chocolate. It really is the best food, I'm telling you. I guess I could always make it. How much do I have? I have zero on me, okay. Works for me. 600 pixels a piece. Ooh, that's steep. Alright, well, we won't buy chocolate. We'll go and farm some chocolate, I think. Oh wait, what do I got? Rice, sugar. I can make bonbons and bon bon bonbons. And I pass the cooking table. Um... Rice cakes, bonbons, then bonbon bonbons. Uh, let's just do them all, uh, except for two. Reason for that is stackability. Sugar stacks, so. All right. Perfect. And it's decent food. It's not the best, it's not the worst. Um, 
Yeah. All right, so um, let's beam up. And let's play this game. Jeez, I wasted enough time, didn't I? All right. Um, that's a hostile ship. I want to see what is on this planet. Titanium. Oops. There's a hostile ship here. Hmm. Get close. Okay, I think we should get close. And uh, oh, I'm I'm there. Okay, so never mind. Electronic station. Um. Hmm. Or am I here? No. Maybe we should go here. Let's go check it out. There's a couple of hostile ships. I don't know if I've visited them or not. But yeah. Yeah, we'll go on a little journey. Because it doesn't hurt. What do we got? Titanium? Snow? Oh, come on now. Okay, there we go. Jeez. All right, let's deploy. All right. Off to the right. Hello! Welcome to our humble spacefaring vessel. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. Pixels and whatnot. My favorite. Books. Books. We don't take piles of books. The Apex can seek solace out here among the stars. I welcome a quiet life. Alright. Now, everybody seems to be yelling at me for scanning things. Um, they're like, Muley, you're, you're scanning things you've already scanned. It's not because I know I haven't... It's not because I've scanned it before. It's because I scan everything to make sure I scanned everything. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry guys. But it's just how Muley rolls and I would love to take this locker. Oh. No. Oh, please, please let me. Is there a generator around here? You know, get a little... Nope. Okay. Okay, well, um... When you guys sell something... Oh, this is just a... Uh, okay. I don't think these guys sell anything. Okay. Oh, that was fun. See you guys later. Beautiful. Oh, hi, Bacon Face. Sorry. Bacon Face 2.0. Um... Hmm. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. Let's see. I can't, because I don't have any fuel. Okay, um... One of these planets has to have a moon. One orbiting body and a hostile ship that we will maybe intercept. Nope. Let's see. 
You are a moon. Gas giant, but you can't go to gas giants. Okay, let's take on a hostile ship. Get some action in this episode. Something, right? I was planning on doing Dura Steel, but then I was like, well, we gotta kinda go through this lore and get it out of the way. Alright, here we go. Itch my nose, scratch my hand. Okay, I'm good to go. I'm good, guys. Don't you worry. Beautiful. Moving on. Ooh, big guy. Got it. Man, oh man. Tell you what, chocolate ain't keeping me full. I'm curious about saturation in this game, like... Is it a thing that happens, or do you just... Do you get hungry off of things... Just because... I should look into higher tier food this playthrough. Because last time I had it like a farm planet, but it was more just for sustenance, not really nutritional value. <laughs> I didn't get into the higher tier foods and that kind of stuff. All right here we go. Probably a turret. Oh, yep, there it is. back. What do we got? Nothing? Soggy paper and moon dust? Salvaged interface chips and pixels? It's all good stuff. Um, bonbons. Oh, excuse me, bonbon bonbons. They fill up pretty good. Um, go in with the gun? Probably. Copper? panel Should we hit him with the old bees? Probably, huh? I love these. Dang it, can't take them. Ooh, fuel. That's what I need. What is that changing? I don't think it's changing anything. Yes, please. All the things. Alright.
Whew, we made it. Already checked that stuff. Keep on moving, Muley. Hmm, okay. I think everyone got the memo. Silver, salvaged parts, a stool. Um, power coupling, okay. Good stuff. A chair. Ooh, the loots. It is a... Zed Mech Boosters. Sweet. Cool. We'll have to go and check it out. I love, 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 love this update. Especially with the mechs. It's just cool, like, the kind of stuff you can get. I really dig it. Alright, up, up, and away. I think I've got everything I wanted. I really want those crates, but... As you guys know, I'm kind of a storage junkie. I just don't use it. And I think we're done. Unless I can find a shield generator around here. And owie, that kind of hurt. Oh. Does that get a particle effect? Huh? What's so special about you? Okay. Anyway. Um... Ouch. Maybe you should stop doing that, Muley. Okay, let's get out. Beautiful. Um, do we get anything worth noting? Oh, I guess I should use that. I already know how to craft Zed Mech Boosters. Okay, okay. It's just a blueprint and I learned it already. Beautiful. Um, maybe we should go check it out. Let's go. Because, yeah, I really, really, really like the mechs. And this is simple mech parts. So I'm guessing there's better parts. Maybe Zed is what we already have. I don't know. <clears throat> nope, nope, nope. Oh, we gotta do his quest someday, too. Um... Boosters. What do we need? Tender steel bars. What do we have? Basic mech legs. Boosters. Basic mech boosters. So... There's the basics. They do nothing. These ones give higher flight speed. Same maneuverability. Um, <clears throat> we do need Durasteel though, so we have to go and find some. Oh, monies. We're almost there. I think it's about time we jump star. Um, I need to mine some... Some, uh... Oh, jeez, what is it even called? Come on, Muley. Urchius. Let's go here. This has two orbiting bodies. Um, the one orbiting body that we were at with this planet was a planet. That's a moon. It's got the stuff we need. This one's a moon. It's got the stuff we need. Um, nothing really significant. So, wells buried below its surface. Hmm. Is that a wealth of fuel or? All right, we're gonna go here. But, my friends, we're gonna do that next time. So, I want to thank you all for watching. I promise not to read any codexes next episode. So, leave me a like, comment, favorite, subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.